Please welcome Danao Mangestu. Now you, your wife is French and you lived in, in France for several years. Um, do you feel, has your, work been, your work has been translated into French, yeah. yeah? Do you feel that, it, it, um, that the reception to it is different in Europe than it is here? Um, at times, yes. Um, you know, this, this new book is just starting to come out in Europe now. Um, and, you know, you're always, I'm, <laughs> how to say this? You're always sometimes worried about the way people want to latch onto your work in other countries because they sometimes want to use your work to indict certain parts of, like, your culture as well, you know? So sometimes they'll be like, ah, there we go, we knew Americans were full of racism. Your, your books have just proven it to us. And you're like, well, that's not really the I idea, right? It's because you guys are actually really racist yourselves. You just, uh, you just choose not to have the same language about it. So don't think that this gets you off the hook. Um, and, then, and then there's other ideas, which, ways in which your books can sort of interrogate certain perceptions about America. So, Oftentimes, people like to ask, like, what is your book? Like, why do you hate the American dream? Which tends to be a very big European construction. <laughs> um, as, as, if, like, as if you do walk around hating the American dream, right? Like, you're the Grinch, and you want to go around stealing the American dream from all the immigrants who arrive. <laughs> like, hey, it's my dream. I take it away from you. Um, but I do think it's fascinating that the idea, like, like, nowhere else in the world is there this idea of a dream, right? Um, and my... And if it's the people think that you hate the American dream, it's like, that's not, that's not really it at all. Um, what I like is the idea of a more complex idea of what the American dream is, right? Like you think of the American dream as being the dream that's the sort of commodity, this thing that we sort of purchase our way into. And plenty of people do here as well. Um, but I think most immigrants think of, in a more, like in a more profound way, the dream isn't that you can sort of buy the house and the car, but that you become a part of something, right? That the capacity to integrate yourself and your children eventually. It doesn't mean that it's in perfect integration, that it's like not come, that it doesn't come with all sorts of terrible flaws, um, but that you do eventually become a part of a culture that isn't defined and isn't, doesn't exist on settled terms. And that's the part of America that I love the most, and that's the part that I think of as being the thing that sort of is the hardest for Europeans or other cultures to understand, right? When they think about, they want your stories about America to sort of, to fit into kind of a, a, kind of a narrative mold that, um, that you think isn't the mold that you want to talk about.